tomato, but we also have Bean, Mary, and Emu. Because like all of you watching, they cannot believe that Demi Lovato is going to be on the show. I mean, do you even have your own talk show if you don't have Demi Lovato? Also, yeah, um, this is a stain. I have not gotten out of these sweatpants uh, for about five days. And I have no plans on doing it anytime soon. Okay, so I am going to connect us with Demi, which I have some questions from uh, the Bright Minds exercise. So we're basically going to go through the um, Bright Minds and ask Demi how she applies this to her life and if she has any tips and tricks to staying lit in dark times. Okay, go live with, when you go live with someone and watch the videos, okay, how do I find her? Um, we go live, we go live with someone. Oh, here she is, here she is, here she is. Okay, there we go. <gasps> Add. Waiting for Demi Lovato. Connecting. Yay! <laughs> um, ignore the stain, ignore the stain. All right, um, ignore the hey, messy girl, clothes. Hey. hey, girl, hey. Um, ignore the messy clothes. I refuse to get out of this junk suit because it's the comfiest thing in the world. That's um, fine. I've been in the All same sweatpants for five days. Thing. I have stop looking at my dick sweatpants. And I have those. <laughs> Do you have the crystal ones? Oh, well, I have the crystal ones. Oh my god, me too. I <laughs> love the crystal ones. I got basically every pair. Everyone is like so fucking excited that you're doing this. You're honestly <laughs> one of the like brightest, most lit, inspirational people <laughs> that I think is like in this industry. And so I just felt like um, you would be the perfect guest to start like giving us some tips and tricks on the best way to uh, be bright in dark times. Oh, well, thank you. And thanks for thinking of me. That's really awesome, sweet. And um, my tips for dark times, I mean, Oh my God, I, I have I have uh, my phone tipped on a coffee cup. It's in between a speaker and a mouse. Like, I'm not sure if this is the way that Ellen does it, but this is the way I do it. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so tips for the darkness. Right now, I've been doing. So I started going to church in December and just like found my relationship with God. For other people, that's universe, but whatever they're having doubt it, but. Um, for me, I just started going to church, and, um, <laughs> that minute, I was just, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I got my dog, too. Um, here's Batman. It's their first play day. Come meet your friends. Cutie. <laughs> they are the only ones that are like loving this quarantine right now my dogs are so happy yeah okay so tips for saying I started going to church and there's this app um, that my church has it has like guided prayers so for me that's my form of meditation it's like guided prayers because I'm quiet I'm present um, and then I've also been meditating a little bit too. And um, I think like the more you can do that, the more you can clear yourself down. I started getting really bad anxiety the other day, so I did this breathing exercise where you breathe through one notch. Yeah, I did that one. Out, and then you do the other one, and out, and out, and out, and it helps so much. I like calm down, um, but also co-regulating with friends. So important to like call your friends and then talk to them and rely if you're if you're by yourself you know, FaceTime or WhatsApp or whatever. When I did RuPaul's Drag Race for the very, they asked me if I had any advice, and that was my advice. And they looked at me like I was absolutely nuts. So, so I was like, you basically, I think they wanted like a makeup advice or like how yeah. I glue down my lace front or like what's the actual tea. Um, but instead I'm all, but it helps me so much. And I do it before every single show. Um, Cause sometimes the breathing just, like I'm not breathing for some reason. Like I just hold I my breath before I go on. 
And when you start doing it, you realize how long you've been so tense. Yes. Yeah. You start to let you just release. It's so nice. It's so good. And I use all the apps also. I use Headspace. I use Oh, I have Headspace. I Calm, just, like aura. Sometimes nice. Sometimes they'll throw in like a little volume booster. I feel like just to wonder if you're still like doing it. Like there's a train <laughs> one because I like listening to the train because it reminds me of being on the tour bus. Uh -huh. But every now and then it does like an insane honk that scares the shit out of me <laughs> in the middle of the night. No. Yeah. No, I'm going to I'm going to send you a video of this one that I have. I have one for the like my bedside and I put on train so I'm like, oh, it's like being on a tour bus. And then it's like, it's for sleeping, like not for attention. So I don't know why it feels the need to like honk in the yes, middle of the night. That's um, but my dogs go insane. It's like freaks them out. Um, well, basically kind of like the bright minds, the exercise that it is, is going through and understanding blessings and curses of social media. That's what B stands for. And I know you kind of sing about like haters and social media in your new song, I Love Me, which I've listened to a hundred thousand times a day. Oh, thank um, you. So what are the, what's one blessing of social media and what's a curse of social media? I think the blessing is humor. Like I find so much belief in- Memes! Like I am so grateful that everybody is able to make content to make other people laugh and to make other people smile. I think that's so important. And even in this dark time, I really feel like there's gonna be, um, people are gonna try to find the, the silver lining, whatever positive they can find out of this negative experience, which may be spending a ton of time with your dog, you know, or, or, or less, I don't know what it may be for somebody, but everyone has something, and, um, and yeah, it's just like, I feel like, I don't know, there's gonna be a lot of interesting stuff that comes out of this, like movie ideas, TV shows and all this stuff, and I feel like because social media, people get inspired to create their own content, and that's really exciting to see what comes out of everything. But um, I think the curse is that I think the cancel culture is way too like savage. It's just, mm -hmm. You have no room for error at all. No way. And Agreed. I think that's a huge problem because it's like. People say this was online 15 years ago. Think, think of how many things changed in 15 years or 10 or 5. Yeah. And you say one well, thing is on the internet forever, and then you're all of a sudden canceled. There's no room for forgiveness. And when I go back even to, to like my values and what I believe in with Christianity, is that's about forgiveness. So for me, it's like we lose ourselves when we're so quick to judge someone and we're so quick to put a label on someone um, for a mistake, you know? And I think that's really toxic and we need to just be more forgiving. Cancel culture actually like needs to either stop or slow down because- I'm, I'm bringing you upstairs. I'm bringing you upstairs because my fans are reading me for my Wi-Fi. They're <laughs> 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 not to cancel culture me because I'm like got bad Wi-Fi. I did a ah, test ah, before. Ah. I did a test before, and even my manager just texted me and said, "Damn, you need some new Wi-Fi, homie." So I'm going upstairs. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yesterday they were calling me an LQ queen, which I had to look that up, and apparently it's low quality. But I had like a blurry <laughs> screen. Wait, that's what I got red. Oh my god, I just keep getting red and red. <laughs> Y'all's damn Wi-Fi. <laughs> I doubt it. I'm Wait, I love this hair color on you. Stopping. Huh? I love this hair color on you. I was going to say I love that lip color, but it's kind of the same. It looks lighter. You know, she's she's not washing right now. Today was the first day I showered because I had, like, a, a pretty exciting desk. That's um, fine. I, I got face mask in my hair, and it's still in it. I live. I live. Oh, they're saying the quality is much better now. Okay, you guys, so I wanted to have a cute little set. Was doing this in the glam room. We're doing it in the bedroom. Okay. Um, <laughs> so then R is a reliable source. Um, who is a person in your life or a website or a foundation, a therapist? You said your church. That could be your reliable source also. Mm -hmm. My reliable source right now, um, I have a lot. And I, one is my therapist um, who I do virtual sessions with right now. Yep. Um, 
it's her it's I've, I've got other people in my life that are on my my team and they're just there for me um and then I and and then my family like I'm with my family right now and they're everything so that's a huge reliable source we're so lucky that we have badass families I know our we moms used to be neighbors and like we just it was so good because we had so many families and we had like you know just so many people in the business I think that's one thing that they really can lack and it can change your entire journey like navigating through the industry if you don't yes. have a badass family I know um and so I wanted to ask about immune boosters because we were talking yesterday, like when you're traveling and working a lot and you're on the road, like it's so easy to get sick and we're doing meet and greets and you're exhausted. Um, do you have any tricks on that or like just sleeping well? Oh my God. Okay. Yes. I'm going to take you to my little cleaning table and my immunity table. Look at this. Y'all. So I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I got rubbing alcohol for when I'm about to make um, hand sanitizer tonight. I got mm-hmm. tissues. I got ultra greens. I got a shit ton of emergency. Then I got all this stuff like Manuka honey is really good for you. I love Manuka honey. Me too. Apple cider vinegar. Um, apple cider vinegar to me is like too hard to stomach sometimes. So I, these are really good. Um, but you know what? Let me, I'll just reverse it. That's so much easier. <laughs> Um, so these are like apple cider vinegar, vinegar gummies that are so good. That's so um, good because I hate the taste of it. My mom loves it, but those are so good. Yeah, they're so, so good. Um, I got, I stocked up on a lot of vitamin C. I'm hearing a lot of good things about vitamin C right now. Yeah. Um, apparently in Beijing, it's like working as a treatment. This is like neti wash. I got a bunch of neti pots in here with more vitamin C and emodium just in case, you never know. (laughs) (laughs) That's not mine, I swear. Uh, Oil of oregano, um, CBD, um, and then I've got probiotics. I've got all of these things. Now, this is like a line. I'm not sure. I'm not, a friend got, like, a friend of the family's got all of these, and, um, like, these protect against 5G radiation. <laughs> this is honestly um, genius. This looks like a dressing which, room table. I know, right? So, and then this is, like, just a box full of latex gloves. Um, and I've got, like, a face mask and everything with, like, a filter. This is my, so this is, I moved in with my family because... Um, I live in an apartment building, and the building um, actually, somebody in the building tested positive, um, like a guest that was there, and so I had to get out. Yeah, um, yeah so I left. I've been, I've been wanting to stay with, I've been wanting to stay with my mom, too. I have a couple um, people in my life that I know that weren't just feeling great, so I've been kind of, like, avoiding my mom until... I know that I feel 100% fine, which is, like, the mm-hmm. hardest thing for me because I want to be with her so bad. But she goes and visits my grandma every single day. So I just want to make sure that I'm, like, totally fine, even though I feel good. I know I'm young your and healthy. I remember your grandma. My grandma, she's in this senior living, and today she wasn't feeling great. She was, like, having um, shortness of breath, but I think it was an anxiety attack just because she's hearing, like, so much about how it will affect her age group. So she had a little anxiety attack today, but I didn't even want to go and like be there for her because I just want to make sure that I'm not so young and so healthy that I don't notice if I'm not of feeling. Of course, no, it's so smart. The social distancing is gonna mm-hmm. like help so much. People don't and I'm so good at it. Take it seriously. I know I'm such an introvert. I'm like, I'm like, so good at it. I'm like, so is something different happening? Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> is something happening that wasn't happening before. Uh, um. So another one that we have of G is getting active, which I've had a really, really hard time with. Um, The last few days, like, I literally can't move because Love Island is about 25 episodes per season. And I keep saying, I keep saying just one more, but now all of a sudden I'm in the, um, the Australian version. So I've gone through the UK version, the American version, the Australian version. I started the South African version. Oh my it's God, like there's crazy. so many options. So getting active has just been like, I've been on my bullshit. But <laughs> I did say that chasing the dog around has, at least I have dogs because they keep me yes. taking them in and out, taking them on walks. Like, is there anything that you do in a small space um, that you would say is the best way to get active? Um, so the best way to get active right now 
Um, my right now, fortunately, my family just moved into this new place, and so um, my sister doesn't have any furniture in the guest house. So I'm gonna use her guest house as like a like cardio room, yeah, like fans and like whatever workouts I, I do from my phone. Um, I'm about I'm gonna do that when I hang up from here. But I or, think dancing is the best. If TikTok can have any purpose, it's that it tricks you into doing a dance for an hour. Because I don't know how to use the app, so I just have to do the dance over and over and over again until I get it perfect because I don't know how to, like, edit it together. Yeah, of course. All, Everybody they're does gonna that. just slay me and say, you're not even on TikTok. I have done a fucking TikTok, you guys. I did it for ah, ah, ah. Thank you. I have done one. It's been a while. Um, okay, so one that I think is, like, kind of interesting way to think about it, and I think that there can definitely be too much, but there is a healthy amount of anxiety and worry um, I was talking to you earlier about, you know, worry is the reason why we want to go over the speed limit because we know that it's not safe to go 80 and a 50. Worry and anxiety keeps us safe. It keeps us washing our hands. But um, something that I was wondering is, like, do you think that some of your worry would maybe be that because you've gone through feeling times of not being confident or not feeling good about yourself? Do you worry about your fans feeling the same way? And is that why you make music about the way you feel because you worry about them feeling the same way? Yes, my whole purpose in coming clean with everything that I've been through is to help someone else because I remember being 12 years old, my body started changing. Obviously, that's what happens when you're a preteen and you're going through puberty and my body started changing and I didn't have anybody in young Hollywood to look up to at that time that had a normal body. I just mm -hmm. had these stick figures that was, um, because that was what was in style and I kind of made a vow to myself that was just like, when I get older, I just want to represent what I didn't have. And I want someone, I want to be that for somebody. And then I remembered I had a little sister, you know, who was yeah. like that age at some point. And I was like, I need to be that for her, that most, in, like first and foremost. And so um, I came, you know, I talked about my struggles with, with food and stuff and, um, yeah, and it and I'm glad that I did because so many it's brought me and my fans closer. Um, it's I feel like helped young people, you know, learn to accept their bodies when it starts to change. Yeah, and um, yeah, I mean, I think I definitely never want my fans to worry or stress or anything. So like that's another reason why when you texted me and said, "Hey, would you do this thing?" It's like absolutely, like. I will, yeah, anything that I can do to help anyone right now. Yeah. We're just sitting in our houses, like, isolated, locked up, like, not doing anything. If we can be a light to somebody, amen. Like, let's do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I have this, like, I basically went through two or three years where I wouldn't wear shorts. I stopped wearing, like, skirts on stage, all this shit, because after the VMAs, and I had on my cute little new bodysuit, everyone started comparing me to a turkey. And making, um, putting a turkey in my outfit. So then I went it because I was like, just like so skinny and so pasty. And they like kept putting me next to this turkey. And I was feeling so bad on myself that I did not wear a bikini for like two years. And no one thought that that would have ever made me feel some type of way. That's what we were talking about. Memes can be so much fun, but they can also just be so hurtful. Because they're meant to be funny. But when it's about you, it is just so not funny. And people made like these gifts. And that was just such a wake up call to me on wanting to use my platform for a bigger purpose that's when I started happy hippie um because I just needed something bigger than this industry because it just made me feel so bad about myself and it was like I was probably 21 and I was just kind of starting to like understand myself as an independent person and it was just really really hurtful just to be like so body shamed like that um and it really like affected me in my personal life of just changing the way that I would be or like not wearing shorts to a beach or just like it changed my personal life. And what was so I think hard about it was my brand has always been about being so unapologetically myself and being confident. And the worst thing that I would feel like I would be to my fans is like a lying or a, a lying or a fraud. But I felt like having this persona of being like the most confident girl on the planet was actually kind of fraud because I was so insecure on the inside that in my personal life, I wasn't even wearing bathing suits or shorts. And when I was wearing like my little leotards and things, I had on fucking four pairs of tights because I was oh my so God, insecure. Same. 
Thing. Like okay, the tight okay. game is crazy. <laughs> two, okay, two things, maybe more than that. First of all, I'm so sad that you went through that and I had no idea. Like I would have, I wish I could have been there for you. I didn't know. And I like, I feel like we've gone through like times where we're closer and then distant and that's fine. That's what friends do. I just wish I could have been there for you. But like, if that ever fucking happens again, um, you better call me. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll, stick to, I'll me walk on. to Malibu. I swear. Come on. Um, I actually wrote that about us today. Actually, I was looking at some of my questions that I was writing for you, and one of the last things that I wrote was, and it, I kind of wrote this question for you, and then realized how much it applied to us. I wrote that um, it's times like this that it's a great chance to call and connect with people that you may have fallen out of touch with or lost contact with through some petty drama. It's in times of crisis that you realize what really matters, and it all seems really silly and small. Um, and I was going to ask you what a tool is that you would use to open up a closed door. And I said, I think it's a smart decision before reentering into someone's life with the stress levels at this height. It's important to ask yourself beforehand if it will absolutely cause no harm or negative effect on them to make amends. And it might be something that you'd want to consider doing once the energy is more mellow because stress can affect someone's typical reaction um and i wrote that life is moving usually so fast that it's hard to slow ourselves down and appreciate people in our lives and that you've been that person for me for so many years and we've been friends for so long and when it feels like the world is starting to crack we all reach for super glue and you and i have been that for each other in and out like we cannot talk forever and then some bullshit will go down and like i'll yeah. just know that you're the person i want to reach out to <laughs> so i said like in dark times it's really important to reach towards those that are eliminated and i just think that you're such a light and that it's just even if it took this crisis to get us connected again without just like we run into each other at the studio or like some shit but yeah. like actually connected and really talking there's like so few of us that we just need to like never let this break again for sure and i feel like there's so like you said so few of us that have known each other for so long that it's like it's important to stick together and being women in the industry it's important to stick together too like it's just you know, it's, yeah, it is it's so important, but I feel like you've always been such a light, and that's why we connected at 14. Like, yeah. I had a fucking gap in my tooth, <laughs> you know? Like, we fucking, <laughs> we connected then because I, we just saw something in each other. Maybe it was our spirituality, or maybe it was just our hearts, I don't know, but, um. Or maybe we were just gay as fuck. <laughs> 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 Okay, what was no. your question? I hate to tell you. Next question. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> um, we all got it. We know. Um, okay. Uh, about thoughts and attention. Thoughts and attention determine how we feel. Um, sad thoughts can make us sad, and happy thoughts make us happy. So what are ways that you stay focused on helping yourself and not hurting yourself? So... Things that make me want to help myself, like, I'm trying to be more creative right now. Like, I want to get, like, I want to do a lot of art right now. I want to paint. I want to draw. I'm all about the like, painting. I want to knit. I used to knit all the time. And, like, I, I forget, but then I start when it gets cold outside because I start knitting scarves for people. Yeah. So probably pick that up again. Um, I don't know. I just Knitting, by the way, was it in the 90s. Like, just so all these little kids, I see all these Gen Zs, like, Knitting, knitting in the nineties meant you were the coolest person in school. Also, knitting loom bands was the shit. Everybody that was it. fucking knits and rehab. Everybody, everybody knits. <laughs> so, knitting is it. That's where I learned. <laughs> that was yeah. so good. Yeah. Um, someone's saying my sound is bad. I'm gonna prop it. They're trying to slay you. I. They say your audio. Your audio sounds great from here. Okay. They yeah, are so kidding. picky. <laughs> They're so picky. Yesterday they were like slaying. I had my therapist on and uh -huh. they were like slaying him. Like this doctor, his microphone. I'm like, can you not slay my therapist? He like doesn't get the language <laughs> that it's like kind of fun to read people. He's like, what do you mean I'm being read? I'm like, okay, you guys just got to stop it. <laughs> um, and so what's something, yes, yeah, so you talked about something that helps yourself. Yes. Um, and then it's a really cool trick that we actually talked about yesterday with my therapist. This was like so badass. He basically said that a lot of us are, 
either in our house or if some of us don't have a place to call home right now, whether you are on a street or like in a relief center. Um, basically, it's called feel great anytime, anywhere. So you spot something wherever you are and you anchor it to a memory. So my example is that when I see a banana in my kitchen, I crack up because one time me and my little brother, we had this tree house and we decided that we were going to live there forever because we didn't like the way our parents were running things. Um, but all we <laughs> brought was a banana. Like that was going to do anything. <laughs> one banana. <laughs> um, and so every time I go in my kitchen and see the banana, it reminds me of how much fun I had like being a total just like country crazy kid with my little brother. Um, so what's something that you can spot where you are right now that would anchor you to a memory and what's that memory? Um, what's something I can spot? Well, it's weird because everything in here is new. Um, what about your puppy? Is she in there still? He's not in here, but um, I, I'm seeing like, so I have these galaxy lights. Oh, love. And by the way, don't ignore my missing fucking nail. That's not changing anything. I look like dude. a child that snuck into a, a tattoo shop. <laughs> <laughs> like I need to soak real. these off. Anyways, um, my memory of, with the galaxy light, um, it wasn't, it's not like an old memory, but um, when I was in the hospital recently, a year and a half ago, um, my sister Dallas came to visit me and she brought these galaxy lights for the hospital room. And it was something that was so small, but so thoughtful and sweet that it changed the whole scenery and environment for That me. is so cool. And ever so, and we just like listened to podcasts and, and just like laid in my bed together. And, um, but like ever since then, I bought like a ton for my apartment. Yeah. And, um, and I just, and I use them all the time, like before bed and it's so nice. It just calms me down. That is such a, that's like a perfect memory. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, so we're getting super close to done. I was going to ask you about, okay, inflammation. So that's like a lot of cause of pain and health issues. Um, mm -hmm. I also feel like we can make this about inflamed amounts of stress. Um, mm -hmm. But anytime we make a decision, even when they are not ideal options, it's best to ask yourself, what is the best choice out of all my options right now? So yesterday we were talking about sugar is inflammatory, but a lot of people are going to have more narrow, less choices for this time being with everyone stocking up. So it's like, okay, if you have three things, what's the best out of those three? So when you're tempted to make a decision that is not best for you, what's a tool that you use to make the right call? I guess right now I'm looking at every time, every time I try, I go to make a decision, I ask myself, what are my values? And does it align with my values? If it doesn't align with my values, I don't do it. I love and that. Right now, to me, I would, there's these fucking cupcakes in my pantry that my family has. And I want them so bad. But I also know that right now sugar can lower my immune system. Yeah. So uh, my values are, it's prioritizing my health. You know, that is my number one value right now. And so I'm going to go with that over just wanting sugar you know? yeah um just because i know that right now my everyone's immune system needs to be tip top you know yeah and i need to do what's best for that so yeah i agree i basically uh freaked out when i went to the grocery and got three cartons they can get you with like probiotic but it's ice cream so there's a probiotic <laughs> ice cream that i looked and i'm like Sugar is literally the worst thing for your gut, and it has so much sugar, but, like, they put probiotics, so there's, like, one little thing in there that makes me go, like, oh, I should buy four of those. Um, <laughs> and, but the good news is that they're officially gone because they were devoured, but no more. There's right. no more, but I get very – you can get manipulated, and you have to be very careful at the grocery store of finding ways that there's – they tell you something is healthy, but right. it's absolutely not healthy. There's this, okay, so there's this documentary, um, well, I forgot the name, so it doesn't even matter, <laughs> but They anyways. wrote probiotic ice cream. They're slaying me for probiotic. It's real. They're like acting like I made up probiotic ice cream. The fans No, I are, believe it. They are. I, I, you know that there's all kinds of shit. They can, you can get like, you know, vegan cake and it's like, oh, I'm just going to live on a cake diet because I'm vegan, but yes. it doesn't mean that you're supposed to eat cake every day. Yeah. I'm getting my sugar right now through like my emergency packets and my like gummy apple cider vitamin thingies yeah. and, like, and fruit because 
that's all going to boost my immune system. We're all about that right yes. now. It's so important. Um, and then, okay, so we talked about negative thoughts. Basically, we call those ants. And so mm -hmm. we want to kill the ants that begin to take over our entire brain, the automatic negative thoughts. Um, I loop, like if I get a, an idea, I obsessively loop on this one idea. So if it's even something that I don't like about myself, when I look in the mirror, anytime it goes like right to that. Mm -hmm. I used to have, I was always so jealous of you because you had the best skin ever. Um, and I had like cystic crazy acne at one point <laughs> and I even when no one else could see it like I was I just... never noticed that because I beat it for Bitch, the we had God. summer parties I still never noticed it beat for the God. and that's what I mean so that's a loop of a negative thought where I'm like the only thing that this girl that has beautiful skin notices is that my skin is crazy so then every time I go in the mirror, I see it, even when it's something so minor. So, like, what do you do when you're starting to get a little OCD on a thought that's not helpful? Um, well, you know, something you were talking about earlier was, like, when you were feeling like you were kind of like a fraud. I yeah. really related to that because when I went through my – when I did my song Confident, I was, like – my message was that I was so confident, but in reality, I was working out so much and eating such a strict diet that I wasn't confident. I wasn't. Yeah. And, and now I feel like I'm more confident than I was back then. And I might be heavier than I was, but like, I'm more confident now. And that's better to me. I would take that over being thinner and, you know, miserable any day. And but you just like, at that time when you're on such a strict diet like that, there's so much guilt every time, yes. even no matter how you're in a much, prison. no you're matter in a prison. how well you eat, no matter how much you exercise, you're just constantly, every time you go to a plate of food, you feel like, I felt like a servant of, like, this brain that, it was just, it's, it just doesn't give you the best quality of life that you can have. It doesn't. And then after, like, going through so much stuff that I did, I realized the quality of life that I want isn't in dieting and extreme exercising. It's just being happy. And so when I have a negative thought like that come into my head, I go back, like I said, I go back to my values. Like, is this what I believe in myself? Is this yeah. going to help me tomorrow? And sometimes, you know, there's a thing about body affirmations that, like, I used to tell people to do all the time. I used to be like, tell yourself you're beautiful and that you love yourself. And, like, reality is, is you don't always feel that way. So yeah. if, if you can look at yourself in the mirror and just be like, you know what? Like, because I still sometimes struggle with body dysmorphia. And I, when, I, when I look in the mirror, if I can just go, I'm grateful for mm. the body that's gotten me through every day of my life, no matter what I've put it through, I'm grateful for the health and strength that I have today. That helps me be grounded in, in my body and it stops those negative body image thoughts. So like, I think it's just a matter of, yeah, just asking yourself, what are your values and how can you be the most authentic to yourself? Because most of the time, those negative thoughts aren't aligning with who you want to be. And I think that it's so hard when someone gives you advice of like, you know, look every day into the mirror and tell yourself you're beautiful, you're three times. It's like, you can say those kind of things out loud, but you still feel that feeling in your heart and your gut where you don't believe it. And it's just not realistic and it's actually yes. not helpful. And um, when that's like, that's a perfect example of in office in authenticity, not helping you. And that's why I stopped telling people to do that. Because I was like, you know, what? if you can't look at yourself and say I'm beautiful, that's fine. Just yeah. look at yourself and be like, I'm grateful for the strength that I have. And then look yeah. at yourself and say one thing about yourself that you know, to be true. And it's like, yeah. I'm a really good person. And if you can look at yourself and go instead, I'm someone that always puts others before myself. And sometimes that hurts me and sometimes that helps me, but it's a quality that I don't want to change because I really love it about yeah. myself. And yeah. yesterday, Dr. Amon was talking to us about understanding what we can change and understanding and accepting the things that we can't change and being cool with that. You know, there's a part of my quality of being that just, you know, my dad was this way, my mom was this way, instinctually, I put others before myself a lot of the time and it can hurt me a lot of the time, but it's really something that also helps me in so many ways, like doing this live series in times yes. of trouble or like it just works in my life so much more that I don't want to work on getting rid of it. I want to train it and contain it, train it and contain it. <laughs> 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 You'll hear that all week. 
but I really do. I want to like know how to use that as a, I actually, when I got my throat surgery last year, I always had this like really crazy, like growl in my voice. My voice always been really low and it used to be something that wasn't an option, no matter what my voice was growly and dirty and you know, rough, but Thanks now me. from taking more training, now I know how to use that when I want it, but also know how to like protect myself and place my voice in different spaces of my throat that won't have that gritty sound that I love, but it actually protects me in long run. But when yeah. it's worth it, when I'm doing Zeppelin or Floyd or Metallica, I go and I grab that as a tool. If we can have things about ourselves that aren't always optimum for our best being, but they are useful at times, learning how to train them to use them when they're helpful and get rid of them when they're not anymore. Mm -hmm. Just I train like them. Um, and then, so two more things about dedicating time, even just 15 minutes to learning something new a day. Um, what is something that you always wanted to learn now that you'll have more downtime where well, you said you wanted to get more creative or what's something that you've learned in the past year? That's like weird. <laughs> um, something I've learned in the past year. When did you learn how to knit? Like how long ago did you learn how to knit? Almost 10 years ago. 10 years ago? Almost 10 years ago, I learned um, when I was 18, and um, I, I was obsessed. I knitted all the time. And so I think one thing that I'm going to do is relearn, because I always forget, and then it gets cold outside, and I'm like, wait, I need to look at that YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then I, like, relearn, and then I'm off YouTube to YouTube is life with that kind of thing. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> And then the very last thing is S for sharing, um, which sharing is caring. And would you share something special with um, everyone that's watching? A lot of them are like my fans, but like I see a shit ton of your fans also on here. <laughs> so what is something that you would think is important for them to hear or just that you love them or positive thoughts for them? Um, what's something that you'd like to tell your fans? Something I would love to tell my fans. I think it's so important for anybody that is um, that is dealt with body image or anything like that, that right now when we're home with our mirrors and things like that, it's so important not to get consumed in negative self-talk. Um, and this goes for anybody, whether you've dealt with body image or not, you know, we're, we're confined into these spaces. We're going to see the same mirrors every day. We're going to have the same, some of these same negative thoughts. It's important not to beat ourselves up over getting nervous, over maybe not, um, you know, eating perfectly, not working out perfectly. Like these are um, different, very scary times. And I've never, we've never been through anything like this in our, in like our lives. So this is all new to everyone. And it's, it's okay. Be gentle with yourself and just take care of yourself as much as possible. Okay, I just heard you so loud and clear because last night I was totally doing that. I realized usually I would not have the time that I had to like stand in front of my mirror and pick myself apart and be like, yes. okay, I did really take down those four pints of the, of the ice cream and I really did cook that frozen pizza and I, I didn't go outside because it's been raining and I just sat and looked at myself and instead of seeing myself or my body, I saw all the choices that yes. I wasn't happy with. So I look at my arm and I'm like, I see that I didn't do my, you know, push ups today. Or I just looked at myself and saw all the things that I didn't do or the mistakes that I made instead mm -hmm. of looking at myself and saying like, Hey, like I'm the person that started a series that in dark times want to bring light to people. I'm the person that practiced guitar today, which I really want to get better at. So by tour, I'm like shredding on the guitar. I did all these amazing things today. And instead of looking at my hands and thinking about the notes I played on the piano or the song I wrote, I thought about all the mistakes or all the things that I did that I didn't like or all my choices that I wasn't proud of. And it was just some bullshit and I'm knocking that shit off. Yes. Good. No more. Good. Um, no more. So I wanted to ask if you noticed that you had 150,000 new streams on your song. Um, I love no. you today. Cause that would be me. Oh um, <laughs> so I just want to, I'm going to play it before we go. And we're just going to sign off. And I, um, I'm just obsessed with it. Oh, thank you. This has started since the morning, like early this morning. You're so sweet. Thank I love you, you so much. Thank you so, so much. I love you oh, too. Wait, Thanks for me I don't know how to my camera, but look, I was learning all the words. <laughs> thank you. All right, I love you. Thank you. Love you. Listen, I love me because it's the best song.